Okay, so we're putting structural uh, with architectural, with mechanical. Uh, this is Navisworks. Navisworks is a desktop application that many people are using today to coordinate on building projects. You can see they've got these new features where you've got heads up design, so you can see column grids as you work through the project. You can see levels. Uh, you can see we can start with an architectural model. We can combine in a structural model, the MEP model. Ideally, all your models fall right into place. Sometimes the mechanical falls outside of the building, and in Navisworks, you can actually translate or adjust that over to get things lined up again. So now the mechanical is in place. Now Navisworks does about four things. It aggregates these various discipline models together so that you can navigate them. We talked earlier about over 60, 80 different file formats, many Autodesk, many non-Autodesk. So if somebody's using a different steel package or somebody's using a different fire protection method, those things will come in and, and compare against the other trades. Here there's a variety of navigation tools that they're starting to incorporate into the other programs. Um, but walking through with gravity and collision and other kinds of things that are fairly new, adjusting the height at which you're navigating, looking around, um, being able to click onto items that are part of a detailed model and actually take a look at the property of those things, what layers it on, what system is it a part of, what are its size and characteristics. Uh, you know, BIM is just as much about the information as it is about the modeling process. You can see we can make comments. There's a whole review cycle that can be done in here in terms of making uh, views so that your colleague can come back behind you and take a look at all these various locations inside the model where you might have made measurements or red line markups. This is the ability to take those models and compare them to create a clash report. So if we want to compare the MEP to the structure, for example, we can do it for the entire models, or we can do it for a subset. Let's just do first floor today, let's do second floor tomorrow, those kinds of things. You can change your tolerance, so it can be a hard clash of a certain uh, distance, and you can see the number of clashes that these models surfaced. And as you cycle through the clashes, you can see it take you to that specific location inside of the 3D model and show you where those two objects are intersecting. So in the coordination meetings, this is where we decide who gets to move their stuff. And so this is a lot of what people are using it for in construction today in terms of coordinating between the trades. Now this next feature of Navisworks, so we've brought the models together, we've navigated, we've done some review, we've done some collision. Now it's a matter of creating these subsets of objects, logistically how this thing might come together. Columns are going to get put in a floor at a time. Pads are going to be created a pad at a time. And then down here, you've got your construction schedule. So P6, Microsoft Project, Excel, whatever you like to use, we can load that in. And we start to make these associations. Step number one involves these items, whether it's the demolition of them or the construction of them. And then step number two involves these items. And so when we start to make these connections, you might see something in the playback that you're about to see that you would have not had the opportunity to have noticed otherwise. So we're seeing trades get in and out of projects in different orders. We're seeing busts and schedules that we wouldn't have detected using more traditional methods. And so you can see the process we're going through of attaching, uh, again, these set of objects, putting them in a bucket, so to speak, and creating the opportunity for them to flow into the schedule. And then we're going to simulate that and just like you saw with the storyboarding that Angel showed before, the ability to export this video and share it with your customer. Uh, so here's how this project is going to come together over a period of time. And people are using it 14 weeks into the job to compare where they were supposed to be virtually to where they are now as they look at that construction camera, for example. Then you can extend Navisworks by using this new technology called BIM 360 Glue. There's a couple ways to use glue on the iPad or on the web. And so this is almost like a Navisworks in the cloud. Um, it does many of the same things you saw, the ability to measure between two points in the model. 
is my column uh, this clear of your particular item? Uh, the ability to, to focus on particular objects. Uh, you'll be able to, to do clashes inside of this as well. So this is just, again, more of a browser application. Uh, very lightweight, very minimal menus, very simple to uh, understand your project and start to turn things on and off, uh, different pieces of the model. BIM 360 Glue and InfraWorks. So BIM 360 Glue is going to be more like Navisworks than it is like InfraWorks. And again, we're talking on a, on a project basis, and we're talking about the idea of, again, this is interested in, in clashes between the geometry. Um, that's, a big, that's a big difference as to why people use BIM 360 Glue or Navisworks, because they're trying to understand the potential flaws in this thing coming together in the field. Whereas InfraWorks would be more at the beginning of the process or on the end of the process than it would be during that construction uh, coordination pre-con phase. And then this is the BIM 360 glue uh, on the iPad. So same interface, uh, navigation very similar, you know, uh, the ability to do sort of an augmented reality concept, the joystick ability to navigate, um, uh, turning on panels on the right to turn views on and off. You can see measurement uh, tools at the bottom, uh, extended properties so I can be out in the field and then I can click on to a duct and find out all that rich information that we've built into the model as we've gone through this and turn things on and off. You can set up views in your models uh, to make it easier so that when people get to here, they can choose, show me a section of the fourth floor and those things come together more easily than having to get yourself to that exact location in 3D space. You can click on two objects and it will give you the distance between them. There's some of the different uh, views that have already been pre-programmed and set up for you to, to go to. 